We'll now look at accessing the camera and obtaining the image data from the camera. In this case, we're going to make use of the Cordova plugin for the camera together with the NG Cordova wrapper around the camera. Let's take a look at some of the details next. To access the camera in your uh, mobile device through the JavaScript API, Cordova provides us with the appropriate API that enables us to access the native capabilities. So now you see a situation where you are accessing the underlying hardware, which is the camera that is installed on your mobile device through the JavaScript API. You are able to use the native capabilities of the device in order to obtain the image data from the camera and then make the data available to your JavaScript application. So in this case, the Cordova plugin enables us to take pictures. Uh, the Cordova plugin also allows us to choose an image from the image gallery if you so choose to by setting up the appropriate options. But in the exercise that follows, we will be using this as a way of obtaining the data directly from the camera. How do you make use of the Cordova camera plugin? You install the plugin by calling Ionic plugin add Cordova plugin camera. Now, we have already seen why we would use Ionic to install the plugin rather than saying Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin camera. So that is how you install the plugin within our application. Next, we will see how the NG Cordova wrapper works around this. The NG Cordova wrapper, as you realized, provides us with a way of making access to the, um, the Cordova plugin and then enabling us to inject the appropriate service. The corresponding NG Cordova wrapper provides us with the Cordova camera service that can be injected into our Angular application. So the Cordova camera service also provides the get picture uh, method which takes some options, which we will discuss in the next slide. And then it returns a promise. So the success uh, function here obtains the image data. In this particular case, I have set up the options. This is what I'm going to make use of within our application. So here I have set up the options so that the image data that is returned is the actual image data encoded in base64 format. So that image data, I am then going to put it to the registration image source uh, property of the registration object there. So that is how I am making use of the Cordova camera plugin through the ng Cordova wrapper here. As we saw in the previous slide, the image data can be returned as a string, which is base64 encoded photo image. Now this enables us to send this image over to the server side and then save the image on the server side as a JSON object because this is an encoded string so it is easy to transport the data to the server side. You can also have the Cordova camera return a image file location on the local storage. So in this case the camera plugin will save the image to local storage and then return a um, URI corresponding to the image file location on the local storage. If you so choose to, you can use this option. You can also allow the camera to save the image into your image gallery or the photo application that you choose to. The options that the camera plugin allows you to specify are ways of controlling what you get from the camera. You can specify the quality of the data that is coming in, the destination type, whether you want a file URI or a, uh, a base64 encoded image, the source type, um, um, and also the encoding type. You can specify it as either JPEG or uh, PNG image, the target width and height of the image. So you can specify what size you want the image to be returned as. And you can also specify whether to save it to the photo uh, gallery, etc. There are other options that are available to you. So this enables you to specify the options for your for your camera plugin. The options are specified as a JavaScript object. As you will see 
in the exercise that we will do next. In the exercise that follows, we will use the Cordova camera plugin together with the NG Cordova wrapper to access the device's camera and then obtain the image data from the device. Then we will make use of the image data within one of our um, models in our application to show the image and then enable the user to submit this information to the server. So we were using this in a registration page on our application. So this uh, usage of the camera here en enables me to obtain a user's image and then use that as the image for the user uh, when the user registers his uh, account on the server. So let's go ahead with the exercise next. <laughs> 